Yeah, that's R.L. Burnside. Ass pocket full of whiskey. So once again, I'm out here at the Topanga Canyon secret location. I think you know what that is. Hey, R.L. Sorry, buddy. Um, but this episode is called Wall Hanger. And you know what a wall hanger is. It's typically, you build one of your guitars. And either it's so junky that you can't play it. Or it's so wonderful that somebody thinks it's folk art and they hang it on the wall and it never goes anywhere. I hate that last part. But anyway, um, the music, again, is R.L. Burnside, Ass Pocketful Whiskey. I'm going to give you a link below. Uh, check out song number seven, The Criminal Inside of Me. You're going to like that one. But anyway, this album was produced by the Bauer Brothers that you know from John Spencer Blues Explosion. They were kind of taking R.L. Burnside and people like Do-Rag and, and people like that out into Europe in uh, mid to late 90s. Anyway, ass pocket full whiskey, you need that one. So this wall hanger isn't going to be what you think it is, um, but uh, we're going to salvage some of this wood to make something really cool for the wall. I'm going to make several of them, and one of you lucky people that knows enough to watch my video so you can answer my odd trivia questions is going to be the winner of a wall hanger. Now, let's get the rules out of the way. You've got to be in the continental United States. I can't be shipping to Europe. I certainly am not going to ship to Russia. Anyway, I think I'll tell you a little bit about that later on. But I got a hint for you. You're going to need some tools. And this ass pocket full of whiskey bottles is going to create a problem for you. Trust me. So on the way out, let's pretend, not that I would do this and not that any of you would do it, but you can't help yourself. You see this, you're hitting this, and you look over, and every time you're doing that, your friend the state trooper is over there, right next to you, staring at you, and you hear the dreaded, woo! And then, guess what? You got tools because we need these kinds of tools to get some of this wood off here to build our project, right? So... Next thing you know, you, you being caught with this, then they want to search your vehicle and then they find what appear to be burglary tools. Next thing you know, not only do you have a problem with your ass pocket full of whiskey, but they're trying to pin every residential burglary in the Tri-County area on you. So trust me, I know how to do this. I got a tip for you about tools. And here's that tip. You got this bag. You got these tools. You don't want your fingerprints on these tools. So what you do is you have someone like Kendra. Y'all know Kendra, right? You have her put the tools in the bag, and that way your fingerprints won't be on it. So you'll just have to deal with this part and not the residential burglary part. Now, that all worked out pretty well for me while Kendra was a minor because it's like that one song. You're under 18, you won't be doing any time. Hey, hey. Yeah, that song. What, what was that song? Anyway, tell me what it is in the comments below because I can't remember. I'm getting old now. Anyway, until Kendra turned 18, it was pretty handy having her be a minor. Uh, but she's not that way anymore. So just wipe down your tools just in case you got this and this going on. Now, don't forget about the contest. Watch through. See what the question is. And you're going to send me an email if you're the first one in the continental United States with the right answer. You're going to get the prize. Now, I need to quit talking to y'all, and I need to get to work salvaging some of this wood here. Okay guys, the next part of our wall hanger is this. This is a Lord Calvert whiskey bottle that I found in the can dump behind Reuben Lacey's church. Now it's broken, so um, this is going to be a little bit tricky and we won't know how it turns out till the end. But if you look up in the corner up there, that I-car popping up, we did an episode called Bottleneck Slide Cutter and this is the product I use and I have good luck with this. Uh, it's more about the technique than it is um, the cutter. 
A lot of people use ice and direct heat and flame and stuff. But anyway, you know my blue slide, love a cobalt blue slide. So I've set the bottle cutter about the same. So I have a reference on this. So I'm going to wash this off, take this cap off, and make sure that it's nice and smooth. There's nothing on the outside to mess up the cutter. There's about 80 years of uh, dirt on here. But I want to make sure that all that is off. So I'll go ahead and get that done. So now I'm going to spread the top of the bottle cut. I really want to make sure I spread that because that little cutting wheel, if it scrapes something, it's going to give it a mark. But I've got that there. And now I want to be really careful. And I'm going to spin the bottle while I'm squeezing this and pushing down. I, I want to try to avoid stopping as many times as possible. So I'm going around and I can't go around more than once. Now if I spin right I'll be able to see where the cutter went before. Okay, so now we're all the way around. You can see that mark there. Okay, now here I come with boiling hot water. I mean it's boiling, you can still see it bubbling a little bit. Now a little trick I want to show you, you need one of these because you want to be able to focus the hot water coming out of here. So I'm going to take this, I don't want to fill it to the top, but like so, and then See, I have this plastic bowl here. I'm going to start running cold water into it. And I'm going to get the bottle cold. Bottle that cold. Okay, so now I've um, pulled the bottle out of here. It's been sitting in this cold water. Remember, there's no ice. It's just cold water. I've got this boiling water. Now I'm going to start pouring this. I want to watch my fingers. See that seam there? I don't want to start there. I want to start right about there. And just carefully dump it on that seam there where I've cut. I'm trying to focus the water right on that edge right there where that score line is. Now part of the reason I have this thing full of water is because sometimes when you're cutting the stuff will just jump right off. So this is a series you have to be patient. I'm going to dump all the water that I have there, about two cups on there, and I'm going to stick it back in here. And you might be able to hear it crack, and I'll fill this up again for the next round. Again, there's no ice, there's no flame, because when you do it that way, you get far too many splinters and cracks, and the, and the cracks go beyond the line you cut, and the next thing you know you've got a bunch of failures. Okay, it's been sitting in cold water. I think this will be the time it jumps off. You can see when I turn this back and forth, you can see that cut. It goes all the way through, just about a couple little places hanging it. So I've left it sitting here. Once again, my water is boiling hot. Doesn't matter if it turns out perfect because um, a little bit more water. This bottle is historically significant. So let's see if it jumps off for us. There we go. All right, didn't turn out perfect. There's a couple of splits and stuff here. I'm gonna grind this off so nobody cuts himself. I'm gonna put this back on here so everybody knows where it is and we'll put uh, the wire onto the board and call it a day. Um, nobody's gonna be using this, but uh, this is pretty significant. Okay, I'm out in the shop and I've got this 80 grit on the belt sander. I'm gonna take this and just go around the edges a little bit here and then flatten it out, making sure there's nothing sharp on here. This isn't going to be used ever, so I don't have to worry about that, but just a matter of knocking down any rough edges. So let me turn the sound down. I'll show you the little technique here like so.
there we go. Good enough for a wall hanger. Okay, guys, we're back in the shop finally with all the stuff for our wall hanger project. Um, I got, you see, I got my Scorpions Blackout t-shirt on and my New York Central Railroad Lines cap on. And I got Charlie Patton's War playing in the background. <laughs> you want to check that one out. Charlie Patton's War. I'm, I know I already gave you a, a musical shout out, but hey. You know what? Why not too? Charlie Patton's War. All right. Um, you know about the wood I've collected from the uh, Alan Wilson site. You know about these uh, bottlenecks that I've salvaged off the can dump behind Reuben Lacey's church. And now it's time to bring the final piece into the puzzle, which is these nickels. One of them is 1943. The other one is 1964. Now, this is the period of time during which Sun House disappeared from North Mississippi until he was found in uh, 1964 in Rochester, New York. And a lot of that time he spent with this company. So, not going to get into too much detail here, but um, this is a final piece of the puzzle that we need. Okay, we got a Mississippi license plate in the background from 1968. Hey, another slide. Hey, can you fix me? That's pretty cool. And no, I'm not the Superman of cigar box guitars. So let's go through what we'll need. We are going to mount something to one of these boards here. And so I'll need a square, some of this blue tape so I can mark things up on the board. Uh, a small drill bit, a Forstner bit. Isn't that cool? Uh, and um, some of this stain that I made out of some cherries I uh, uh, that we ate and took the pits and some scraps off it and built this built this made this uh, dye or stain and I'm going to use that on here too but that's kind of what we'll need so let me show you how I did the layout now some of these boards I got from the side are pretty dull um, other ones are a little bit more colorful uh, like this one here and then I've selected one of these, there we go, uh, that I'm going to use here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've, I've marked out, I want to cut this board off here. I want to cut it off here. And then I've marked it up in the center. So what's going to happen is these nickels are going to start from 1943 up here. And then the 1964 nickel will go there. And we'll mount the slide right there, like so. Of course, the color will pop out when we get these off. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this and cut this off at um, the chop saw. And that's going to give us a clean edge over here. Um, this is not a clean edge here. So if I'm going to make the wood, of, I'm expose the wood. Once I get all that done, then I'm going to stain all sides of it with this. And then start drilling my hole. So... First thing again, chop saw here and here, and then belt sander on both sides. All right, everything's good. We're going to stain this in a little bit. And then I'm going to shellac this whole thing or lacquer it once I get all the holes drilled and stuff before I actually start mounting stuff. But I want to get the holes drilled first. Now, you always want to remember, if you use this painter's tape when you're drilling holes, it's not going to flake off the edges so much. So you've seen this before. I put a lot of uh, buffalo nickels in my builds and antique coins and stuff. So this is just a tad bigger than a nickel, this Forstner bit. I've got this marked about two inches down from the top of the board and then two inches up from uh, the bottom of the board. So I'm just going to pop that with the point right there and drill this down enough for this coin to fit flush in there. All right. 
There's the second one. And we're going to epoxy those in there like that. Now it's time that we're going to put the slide here. So this is what it's going to look like. We're going to have the coin there, the coin here, and then we're going to put some kind of hanger on the back. <laughs> but I've marked this off where the wire is going to come across here. So I need to drill two holes and then I'll mount that wire there. Now I'm going to take a little chisel once I know where these holes are. And on the back side, put a little groove here so the wire fits in that groove and then goes through so it's not scraping on the wall or whatever when it's done. So attention to detail, I'm kind of a freak about that. There we go. All right, now here's a piece of wire I found um, at the Wilson site. I don't want to talk too much more about that. But anyway, I'm going to run this through, make a U out of it, and then run it up through the bottom, and then end up wrapping it, wrapping it around the slide to keep it on there like this. So everything about this has come from one of the sites. So now that I've drilled these two holes here, I can go to the back and basically take this flat chisel, and I want to work this down enough here to where that wire sits flat and doesn't stick up above the wood. So let me do that. There we go. Now I've straightened out this wire. I'm going to put one end through here. Make sure I've got enough up there to go at least to the center of that. And then we'll just bend it right here like so I'll make me a little mark here and cut this off with my dice do not use your fret wire pliers to do this I have a good pair of dikes here okay so I'm snap that off get my marker right there and then we're going to bend that okay there's my mark Flip it like this. Make like one of them hog wire staples. You know what I'm talking about, right? You're showing your age. And then I pop this down in. Like so. And push it through. There we go. And if it doesn't fit, you know, force it. Alright, there we go. Nice and smooth. And that is how I will wire the slide on right there. Okay, now I've bent these wires over here. And I'm going to mark on both of them where they both touch. And then I'm just going to bend each end around and hook them together. And that's how it will hold. Okay, so I've taken these dikes. I've bent these wires opposite ways. I want to make sure that I can get my slide in here. And then what I'll do is I'll pop this in like this take a needle nose straighten this up and then bend these into themselves but before i do that got to kind of dismantle this now take all this tape off i want to blow this off and lacquer it so whatever it is whatever's there stays there and um then i'll epoxy these in and everything and mount it once it's all dry All right, guys, a couple things I want to show you. We've got the lacquer on here. This is ready to drop down that slot to make it smooth. Now, before I put everything like this glass slide that's virtually irreplaceable, on, the, on, on this side, on the front side, I don't want to be beating in the, the hanger for this that makes it a wall hanger once that's done. So I found the center of this, and I've made a mark, and I've got one of these um, sawtooth pitcher hangers. Fortunately, it's got a mark right in the middle. There's my mark right there. I line that up and take my little thing here and beat this in like so. Now, I'm going to put a couple of screws in here. And, of course, they're going to be the same kind of screws we use to put on 
our, our tuners and stuff like that because I only want to do this one. So let me get that done. All right, there we go. Back done. Ooh, that front come out nice. Look how shiny that is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this epoxy and mix it up right here because I'm going to epoxy these nickels in right here once I figure out where the top and bottom is and of course I'm going to stir that with my bacon flavored toothpicks and we already kind of discussed whether or not these are really bacon flavored um, oh yeah they are perfect all right all right we'll stir that up real good now we're just gonna put some down in here put a big heaping mass of it right there in the middle then we push our nickel and it'll push up now I like this stuff for this kind of stuff a little bit better than JB weld because this stuff dries clear so when it comes up around the side of the coin you're all right there we go you yeah, always be watching the background here there's a uh, R crumbs rendition of Rube Lacey um, in uh, Yazoo's Heroes of the Blues Club let me get cards like trading cards uh, he's certainly not the Pete Rose one that everybody's after but yeah there it is um, so now what I want to do is I got the epoxy in there I want to make sure that we're turned the right way so this is the top as is here and I want to take the oldest coin which is when Sunhouse disappeared 1943 and drop that in there and turn it just the way I need it and then the 1964 when they rediscovered him and Alan Wilson gave him a couple of his own guitar lessons we'll drop that one right there and then for good measure we're just gonna make sure everything looks good there there we go I'm gonna let those harden up just a bit won't take too long and we'll wire that on we'll be good to go all right there we go I'll drop this and I want I want this to sit just like this and this wire to be tight around here so bent this around again there's nothing besides the nickels it didn't come off of one of these places we're talking about so I'm going to tighten that up just a tad like that and then I'm going to touch this up and cut these wires off and bend them over and we'll have a final look well right now a little help from my friends at Earl Lube Paste cover up this wire back here we'll have a look at the front all right, guys, we are done. We got uh, coins from representing when Sun House left Mississippi uh, a year or so after Alan Lomax recorded him, the time period he disappeared until he was rediscovered in 1964. We got a piece of wood from the place where Alan Wilson, the guy who basically taught Sun House uh, how to play his own music again after he was rediscovered. And where it all started, a bottleneck from the church grounds right behind it and a wire uh, from the same place of Reuben Lacey, um, Pioneer Slide Guitar Blues Man. And um, so anybody looking at this wouldn't know the story, but there's a lot here. So here's the punchline. The first person... In the continental United States, I can't be sending it overseas. I don't need Nancy Pelosi or somebody like that trying to impeach me for um, getting a Russian postage stamp or something like that. Sorry, comrade. Uh, I know I got a few of you out there. But anyway, first person in the continental United States that sends me an email, here's the question. What is the recommended baking mileage for engine bread? Yeah, them low hits on that episode are about to go up, ain't they? So anyway, speaking of that, give me a like, uh, subscribe if you can. You'll get a notification when I do another cool project. So um, next episode, we're going to get back on building something. But thanks for hanging in, me, in there with me 
for episode wall hanger. I'm going to make a couple of these, but hey, get that email out quick. This very one here can be yours. See you next time.